Think of something cold. Maybe an ice cube? Maybe you thought of playing outside in the leaves with your fall jacket on. Maybe you thought of teaching your little brother or sister how to make their first snowball. That's pretty cold. But let's think of a place that's even colder. A place where it's always winter and always cold. Did you think of a place where this guy lives and doesn't even have to wear a coat? This area of our planet is called the Arctic Circle. It is at the very northern tip of our planet and all of the surrounding land areas in this part are very cold. The Arctic Circle is a place where the Arctic animals thrive and have fur or feathers where they can survive and thrive and where humans have to bundle up just to survive. You'll see that this person is snowshoeing slash skiing through the North Pole. Look how many layers they're wearing. This place was not built for humans to survive just as we are. We'd have to layer up. However, despite the cold, harsh conditions, every year, many, many people travel north with their coats to see a once in a lifetime spectacular view that only happens within the Arctic Circle. This natural occurring light phenomenon is called the Northern Lights or the Aurora Borealis. The same type of phenomenon occurs in the South Pole or southern arctic areas but we're just going to stick with the northern lights let's look at this diagram about how the auroras are formed thanks to the blog nico's daily life for starters on the left hand side the sun emits charged particles into space during a solar flare these particles are coming off of the sun because the surface is con constantly melting, almost like a lava surface. When these particles come off, the solar particles make their way to the Earth, travel along Earth's magnetic field, and enter the atmosphere at the poles. The poles, the top and bottom, or north and south portion of our Earth, are the only areas that the magnetic fields don't completely block these solar particles. The charged particles collide with molecules and atoms in the Earth's atmosphere, resulting in light-emitting photons. When these collisions happen, the different colors of the auroras are caused by different types of mo molecules involved in these collisions. That's why we see different types of blues and greens, reds and purples. This is a photo that my brother took on his trip to Iceland a couple years ago. Iceland is within the Arctic Circle. These ocean waves are splashing up onto huge pieces of ice. Some of them were bigger than my brother. Um. Um. <laughs>
All right, hello my amazing artists. Let's go ahead and get started on our Aurora Borealis, that is the Northern Lights painting. The way you're gonna set this up is you're gonna have a paint tray. Um, it's okay if it has some mess on it. That's just cause somebody else had used it before. And you're gonna take some of the tape that I gave you. This is masking tape and set it on the corners, all four corners, and then turn your paper over. This is gonna help so that your paper doesn't fall off or curl up while we're painting. All right, today's focus is gonna be about blending colors and seeing how water can impact the flow of our colors with our paint. We're gonna be using our tempera paint instead of our watercolor pans, so this is gonna be a lot of fun, and we're gonna see how these colors blend and mix. Um, here we go. We're gonna start with our fluffy paintbrush. It holds a lot of water like a sponge, and we're just gonna brush our paper a little bit. I'm not gonna do a lot, but just enough to get your paper wet where you want your Aurora Borealis lights to go. We learned earlier that the colors of those lights are, can be, purple, blue, green, and even some red, which I forgot, let me get some red out. So, there's a little bit of red to include. All right, yeah. So I've got all my colors, I've got my paper moist, and I'm gonna start with some blue. You can start with whichever color you like, and you can just go across your sky. Immediately you see that my color is moving and growing because the water is pulling it. Um, that's the effect that we definitely want. I'm going to dip into my purple and see what happens when I start to blend these. I don't wanna stir um, to mix a new color, but instead putting these colors side by side so they blend is the effect that we're gonna go for. Just to see how they interact side by side. If your paper is getting a little dry and you want your paint to move a little bit more, just add a little bit more water. It doesn't take a lot. Maybe you want your lights to dance a little bit we learned about how those northern lights can also curve and dance across the sky. So maybe you're using curved lines. But as you add that new color, just set it right next to the one you just finished, not leaving any spaces, making these lights all move together. Just dip. You don't need a lot of paint. Nice. That water really helps it move. So as we're painting these, I want you to think, what would it be like to stand out outside in a very cold, cold place on a very dark, dark night, and all of a sudden see these lights come into the sky? I think it's pretty amazing. I've not seen them yet. My twin brother took a trip a couple years ago to Iceland, um, which is within the Aurora Zone in the Arctic Circle. and he shared with me a video of seeing them and it almost looked, pretend, almost like something you would see on TV, but it was real and it just amazed me. Now I'm at the end of my work, but I'm going to check to see if there's any other areas that I wanna add some more of the color while we still have our paper wet. I'm gonna try for maybe one of those green lines that can come up. Somehow those always tend to be some of the brighter ones in the Northern Lights. Oh, and I forgot my red. I'll just add some streaks of it. That's okay. This is yours. Make it the way you wanna make it. Don't let anyone tell you different. Oh, I like that. All right. Remember we have our paper taped down for the reason so it doesn't curl when it dries and make our colors run. When this is all dry, we're gonna come back and talk about our next detail. Be sure to get an old toothbrush, um, some not, you, not yours or someone else's, get one that's not being used anymore, and some white paint. I'll see you back in a little bit. Hello, my amazing artist, and welcome back. We are just about all dry with the original painting of the Northern Lights that we're working on. And I've changed brushes. I've got a smaller size liner brush 
It's kind of pointy, it's not very fluffy. And we're gonna be using this brush to add some details. I see that some areas of my light are more vibrant than others. If I wanted to, I could dip back into my paint and just make some more details because my paint still has some moisture. That paint might even still flow. That is just fine. But if I wanted to highlight some special parts of my work, I could. Once you've got it looking just the way you want, you're going to start using some white paint. And I hope you brought your toothbrush. Not the one you're using this morning, but an old one. All right, wipe that brush off or rinse it in water, whatever your preference. All right, let's get our white paint. I'm going to load my brush up real good. I'm just going to make a line. Then I'm going to make another line, like about three. If it gets a little faded, just go back. This we're going to do a little fast because we want the paint to stay wet. And I'm going to take the paintbrush use the bristles and pull up. This gives the effect of your lights in the sky. And it's even blending with some of my moist paint, which is wonderful. I love that effect. I'm just scraping that white paint up. This lesson idea came from another art instructor on YouTube who I'll put down in the comments. Um, thank you so much for sharing that idea. It was great getting inspired and I can't wait to share these thoughts with my own artist. All right. That's looking pretty cool. Last step, we're gonna dip our paintbrush in the white and now we're going to flick. This is going to create stars. You can choose to do this while your paper is still a little moist or you can wait until it's absolutely the most dry. The closer you get, the bigger the splatters. Wonderful. All right. Happy making with that section. The very last part we'll get back to you is the silhouette of a landform or a person or whatever you want to put into your Northern Lights image. All right, hello, my amazing artist. We are ready for the final portion of our Northern Lights. Remember, we cannot see the Northern Lights unless it is very dark outside and you are in an area of the world that is near the Aurora Zone, near the North Pole or South Poles and um, around other places that don't have a lot of lights. So we wouldn't be in a big city, we'd probably be out in um, a large land area. So when my brother went to go see the Northern Lights, he was near many rock formations. And so I'm thinking I'm going to take my large brush and just start with a zigzag, maybe a curvy line, and just think about the mountains that he was near. This is gonna show us that it is very dark outside, so dark that we only see the outline of the mountains, and we can see the brightness of the Aurora Borealis, excuse me, those northern lights. All I used was a simple zigzag, but look what happened, it becomes a mountain range. Maybe for you, you wanna draw a tree. Maybe there's something else in nature that you would notice when observing these lights at nighttime. Or maybe it's part of you. Maybe you wanna show how you're looking at those lights at night with an outline of you. It is entirely up to you. I cannot wait to see your Northern Light artwork. Again, make it how you want. I think I want this mountain to be a little taller just to add some variety to my work. All right, project complete. Happy making artist. I can't wait to see your work.
Hey artist, before we say that this project is completely done, I do want to address an issue that I found in my own art supplies. Sometimes depending on the white temper paint that you use, it can have trouble being opaque or be solid. Um, you can see that the white lines that I created for the Northern Lights to appear as if they're shifting, they're kind of see-through. So my paper has dried. It's been a couple days since I made this project. So I'm actually gonna go back with, again, the white temper paint that I have. I've just put some in a bowl. And because everything is really dried, this paint should adhere a little better. I'm gonna make some chunks, some just globs. And I'm still gonna take that toothbrush just like before but because the paper is absolutely dry, there's no more moisture whatsoever, um, this white should be a little bit more um, opaque instead of transparent. And if you're doing this project at home or you have access to um, different materials than maybe what your um, classroom has been supplied with, um, I would recommend using a white acrylic paint I use tempera because it is washable with my young artist and it comes out of clothes really easy. So um, we just work with what we have and we do the best we can. Another solution would be to go back with oil pastels. You won't be able to have the pull effect with your toothbrush, but you would be able to get a clean white line effect, whatever's gonna be most important to you with this. And I'm not taking this brush all the way down to the bottom of this line. I'm just getting the edge of those pink globs that I made and pulling it up. And I think this is looking a whole lot better. I'm gonna go and get just a little bit down here. I know I've got my mountains, but I'm gonna edit it just a little bit. And this is a way that we can really finish this up well. All right, artists, thanks for making with me. Thanks for hanging in there, especially when we have some supplies that maybe um, don't react the way we want them to. Um, but I think we've made it work well. Happy making.